is something about um, poo that I just find so fascinating. I'm not sure what it is necessarily, but I think the fact that we don't talk about it really fascinates me. Um, <laughs> if you know my work at all or anything, any of the shows I've performed before, you will know I like talking about taboo topics. So let's talk about taboo poo. I think I grew up in a family where, you know, nothing was ever like responded with like, oh, that's gross. Like there was no shame around asking bodily questions. And so I think that's been instilled in me that it's very normal to talk about bodily things, including poo. I'm very okay with people asking me, you know, have I gone today? Um, you know, how are my poos going? Um, so like naturopaths and stuff, like, you know, like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. Here's my poo roster, blah, blah, blah. I don't have a poo roster, but I do actually write down when I do them just to check how things are going. Um, in case I do feel a little bit shitty and blocked, which is totally normal. Um, then I'll be like, then I can look at the last time I did a poo. Um, I talk about poos in Munch Munch because we just need to talk about poos more. And not necessarily like the way that most men seem to talk about poos. Um, I've had a couple of boyfriends where they like announce, I'm doing a poo. And you're like, okay, right. Um, that wasn't necessary, but sure. Their clockwork poo style is somewhat enviable, I have to say. And I've been told that is that is the healthy way of having a relationship with your poo and your um, digestive system. Um, but what I really want to talk about is like people don't take, not everyone I've met take their poo life seriously. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. Like, um, so like being me, it comes up in conversation with good friends, good friends. Um, and they will tell me like their poo situation and I will be flabbergasted. Like, why aren't they seeing a doctor about that? Or like, cause I just think about a, if it's like too often, how are they absorbing all their minerals and vitamins? And how are they absorbing all the good things out of the food? And B, if it's like the other way around, if it's too slow, like I oscillate, but I'm usually to the slower side of things. Like what are happening to all the toxins that are being ready to be released, but aren't being able to be like dumped. And you know, this, I worry about my friends and I, so when people, yeah, when my friends tell me their poo situation, I worry for them. Like, you should see someone. Go see a poo doctor. I, I hope they exist. I've not met one, but I hope poo doctors exist. And, like, it's just, poo tells us a lot about our life and our relationship with food as well, because it's, well, I mean, it's, it's the, the other one. Um, it's the other end. I don't know why I'm being so like wishy-washy. I'm usually very like very blunt about poo. Okay, switching into blunt mode. So when we don't talk about poo with our friends and family, our good friends and family, the one that we can trust that won't laugh and snigger at us and put fake poo on our seat to make a joke at us, we actually then can voice concern if we are worried, like I can. Um, sometimes it's, you know, we share details for novelty. So for some reason, my, um, my mother has like kept this impression of my poo situation just because that's how it was in childhood. And I got actually, actually got quite angry with the idea because, uh, like all things in life, our relationships with things change. And my relationship with poo changed once I had cleaned up my diet a bit, gone dairy and gluten free, and um, 
listen to my body more, don't eat breakfast, give my body and my liver some time to chill out. And yeah, so she, she's known me as a, a slow pooper. She, she thinks I'm exactly like uh, my father. And so I got really upset that my poo identity had been wrongly remembered or wrongly unupdated, I guess. And from that conversation, I learned that she uses coffee to make her go. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course, but you should be able to go without coffee. Okay. Can I, I'm just going to say you should be able to go without coffee. You should be able to go without laxatives. And if you need something to make you drop a load to take a dump, please um, consider seeing someone. I'm definitely not a medical professional. I'm probably more of a comedian, a poo comedian than like than a medical professional. So but I care about your poo life and I really want your poo situation to to be the most ideal it can be. You know those sweet poos where it's just like you know you like you're ready and you're like <laughs> and you walk to the toilet and it almost takes just 10 seconds and you just like under your pants and you take a seat and it's just like whoop and it's gone and it's it's not too messy and then you're like yeah yeah feels like you know you train your um what do you call them the people who jump out of planes and they're like on a mission and they're going to like, so I like um, <laughs> spy movies sometimes, so just that sort of vibe, and it's like, that was really well executed. Yeah, I get very proud of those moments. I hope other people do too. And I basically just want to talk about poo for however long I've been talking about poo, because I want to normalise it, which I think I have relayed strongly enough. Poo is important because it's a part of our food life. And our food life is important because we are going to be eating food for pretty much every day for the rest of our life. Unless we're doing a 24 hour cleanse or we are unfortunately unable to get access to food at some point. Or we do one of those um, famine starvey charity things. It's really important to know how to feed yourself to get the best out of your body. And sometimes that means looking at your poos. I love like poo checking. It's, um, oh my God. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I love poo checking. Um, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, because it teaches me a lot about my food and how my body is dealing with my food and other random things like I did a gallbladder cleanse not the I don't do the pre washout thing or if that's mm, mm. um the one where you just eat apples all day and then you have a lemon lemon juice and olive oil thingy in the after evening did that and um oh yeah that was the next day was like I was so into making checking out my poos and you know, oh, what's this? So oh, what's that? And it was like, it was an adventure. It totally was a little bit messy, but it was an adventure. Um, yeah. And no one talks about that. Like I watched a lot of YouTube videos on the gallbladder cleanse and no one talked about poos at all. They were just like, it would just sort of like leaves your body or, um, oh, you know, just the next day they come out and you're like, at first, I was like, come out where? Like, do you pee them out? No. <laughs> oh, sometimes I'm quite naive and I'm like, what? How? Um, so for a moment, I did believe that you pee out your gallbladder stones. But no, that's not true. You, you, you shit them out. They come out in your number twos and 
that's not technically yeah yeah so i did my research and learned how bile is supposed to work beforehand so i was a little bit like confused because your bile is meant to get reabsorbed before it goes into the large intestines um so i got a little bit confused by that information i was like but but they're not meant to go through your large intestines. So, but anyway, moving on. Maybe I'll just close up, you know. I've got to go do a poo. Oh my God, I totally forgot. Okay, um, I have a poo story for you. Like, one of my poo stories. Um, and it's, it's not gross. It's just, I just want to share with you a story that is true, that is about poo, and just the practicalities of needing to poo. So, um, I, I grew up with um, dad working from home and one day after high school, like I was walking home from the bus and I was like, I, was, I needed to go. Like I was, I was getting ready. And um, normally if um, dad went out, he'd leave a key, but he hadn't. So I was like, oh my God, like, I never know how long it would take um, when he's gone out. So I'm like, he could be here in five minutes. He could be here in like an hour, like fudge. What do I do? And so, hmm. anyway, we had, um, so I just realized something. This so next part of the story is like, okay, I decided I was going to poo in the backyard. And we have a dog, a German Shepherd cross blue healer. Lovely, lovely boy, man, lovely man, man dog, um, Sammy. I miss him. Um, <laughs> so he's following me around as I like prep up my poo station. Um, I put some newspaper down. Um, I don't think it was windy, but if I had, I would have probably popped some rocks on the newspaper. So like, yeah, um, mess. Oh my God. Fuck. Um, yeah. So I pop the newspaper down. Sammy is following me everywhere and I go and do a poo. And so I'm squatting over this newspaper and like listening out for any random things like the neighbor looking over the fence or dad coming home. All good. Nothing wrong. Happened nicely. Um, oh, and he's, oh yes, I remember this bit. And so toilet paper, right? We need toilet paper. Um, I had previously learned in primary school that the indigenous people of the Noongar people, they used the bark of the paper bark tree or the Malaluka to, as toilet paper and I knew how to make it. So I hope we, I hope we prep this before I actually do the poo. Um, that would be smart, wouldn't it? I can't remember actually, but, um, what you do is you get the park bark of the paper bark tree, you roll it up. And then you sort of like soften it by doing this and you use it. And I believe I used that. I hope I did. Hmm. Or more newspaper. And then I rolled up the my parcel, rolled up my poo parcel, and I put it in the compost bin. And I hope I washed my hands when I entered the house when dad got home. But like that was one of my poo stories and I think it's my best one. Don't really have another one that I can think of. Oh, and just because we're talking about poo, um, I used to be so self-conscious of the plopping of poo falling into the water of the toilet. I used to hold it. So I used to like with toilet paper, with my toilet paper lined hands, I would like hold it and gently release it into the water and like I, I can't believe that I did that um, yeah I was so self-conscious about the plopping sound even though like doing a poo is a total high-five moment a, a high-five moment like yeah um, I think I did that maybe for up to two years for a while it was like it was for a while and any other weird poo things I can share with you and just the purpose right once again is to um you're not alone and you know I would love to meet another person who 
held their poos to reduce the plopping sound in the toilet. Like, I would love to meet you. Come, come say hi. And yeah, if you've done a shit in the backyard and you've, you know, wrapped it up and composted it, you know, tell me, tell me what your situation was because it totally happens. It's, it's definitely not sexy, but it's totally normal. What else are you meant to do? Like, what else are you meant to do? So, yeah. If you like me, leave a comment. I want to hear from you. If you don't like my poo stories, you don't have to hang around. <laughs> okay.